Last time on the investment series, we met Matilda star, Kaya Simon, who told me how she grew up and her ambitions for the future. Kaya's done well and already owns an investment property. And this week, she's going to meet face to face with her new financial advisor, Deb Kent, who'll be going through a strategy to see her get her goals both now and in the future. Kai is also going to be getting the Masterclass of a Lifetime from UBS Asset Management's Head of Emerging Markets, Jeffrey Wong. I think the average person would be rather surprised by really how much money they actually need to put away in order to retire. Young people are living great lives, they're having lots of fun, and Kaya, especially, you know, with the role that she's got as a professional footballer, she's doing great things and she's a real role model for young women in sports. But it's getting young people to focus on their financial life. In other words, looking at their budgeting, what are they spending? If their goal is to own a home, how are we going to get there? Yeah, I'm back. Hello. <laughs> How are you? And how did you get the property? Like Deb said, you've got an investment property already. How did that come about? I'm big on goal setting and that was one of my goals was to own my own property one day or at least get into the property market at some stage. Most people tend to go into property um, with the view that they like to get some tax deductions. But you're probably in a situation where it's called positively geared. Mm. So in other words, you're not necessarily getting tax deductions out of it anymore. So you've got your rental income, you've got your mortgage payments, the interest on the mortgage payments and the outgoings. And when I work through that, it actually says that you, instead of getting a deduction that you'd be paying tax. So what we need to see is, is that property going to grow by at least inflation and what you lose in tax. Mm. So that's something that I, I think we need to tease out more and have a look at that property to see whether it is actually doing the right thing for you. Yep. Deb's going to get the tax structure right for Kaya's investment property to get her the ultimate goal she has of buying her own home to live in. Budget, I think, was a big thing that came out for us. There is cash flow there. We find that there's a cash flow that you can use for saving, but sometimes it's not there for you. So you might be spending more than what you realise mm. to start sort of saving. How much do you think she could save every year? Based on the figures that I've got, the assumptions I've got around Kaya, I reckon you're looking at around about twenty to 25000 a year extra. Deb believes Kaya will need to curb her spending habits and put together a budget. And she will need to use her discipline to stick to it in order to achieve her financial goals. And of course, we need to look at things like your superannuation because retirement seems a long way away. Does she need to put more in, do you think, every month or every I year? Or? I think um, looking at it a little bit extra, just a little top up, Okay. Um, in salary sacrifice or working through your company as a deduction, that is just going to put the edge on it. And yeah. we can have a look and see what that looks like. We, again, superannuation seems like it's so far in the future, mm. it's not tangible. Yeah. But it is actually going to be... You're one... like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the look on her face. <laughs> yeah. It's actually going to be one of the biggest assets that you'll hold outside of your own home. Yeah. And okay. we need to look at it that way. Deb's going to be busy helping Kaya build a financial plan, which will include restructuring her investment property, looking at her budgeting and savings, and how that cash flow can pay for Kaya's future. It's very typical of young people to live life to the full and maybe just put that on the back pedal. But I think now, talking to Kaya, we've been able to identify a whole bunch of gaps that we can try and help her get onto her dreams and goals for her future, especially post her football career. Meanwhile, I'm bringing in Geoffrey Wong from UBS Asset Management to give Kaya a masterclass of a lifetime. Jeffrey's the head of emerging markets for the whole of UBS and supervises a team of managers based around the globe. Kaya is lucky to be learning from the best. My guiding principles to accumulating wealth are a few. Uh, one of them is to put your eggs in a few carefully chosen baskets. You get about 70% of the possible diversification if you just have five very different investments. If you know your investments well, you don't have to diversify too widely. But at the same time, as they say, you really shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket either. So a few carefully chosen baskets. Another principle would be to start early. You know, the power of compounding is, is extremely, extremely strong. Start early, start accumulating wealth. I think I've had a few lessons, some of them from my work and some of them just from living. I think one thing is that uh, you have to learn from history, 
but don't expect history to repeat itself exactly. So you have to balance that off, right? You learn from history, you learn, but you realize that things change. Things don't have to repeat themselves exactly. And the second thing is you learn from people as well. So again, there's a balance. You have to have confidence in your own decisions, but you also have to know when other people know more. So you have to know when to listen to others, when to listen to yourself. And again, that's a balance. Uh, I don't think in any book you're going to find, uh, you know, you're going to find a magic formula for doing that. That's simply, that's simply judgment. Planning for the future is important. Uh, as they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I think the average person would be rather surprised by really how much money they actually need to put away in order to retire. When I have this conversation with my friends, they, they are surprised. So again, the importance of planning and starting early. Sit down with someone who understands finance, go through the numbers with them and, and think about it. Yeah, it was very informative. I think I definitely learned a lot. A few key notes that I took away from it was obviously not to put all your eggs in one basket in terms of investments, to start early. And at the end of the day, you don't know everything. And I think that's all aspects in life, but especially in terms of finance, there's always people out there that you can get wisdom and knowledge from. And for me, I'm definitely searching for that. Pai has learned a lot from Jeffrey's masterclass and his top three secrets were diversify, start early and listen to the experts. Like most Aussies, Matilda star Kaya Simon is obsessed with property. But it's become apparent she may not be getting the most from her investment. Today I'm joined by Bryce Doherty, who's the CEO of UBS Asset Management, and Debbie Blakey, my regular expert, the CEO of Hester Super. Well, Debbie, Kaya thought she was doing the right thing. Like many Australians, she's bought an investment property and is diligently paying off that mortgage. Why do you think it is that Australians keep going to property? Vanessa, I think it's totally understandable. First of all, you've spoken about you know, the love affair that Australians have with property, but also the fact that it's a tangible investment. It's something you can see and you can take photos of. But you know, it's not the only investment. And I'm not saying it's a bad investment. For many people, it's a terrific investment, but it's not the only investment. And I think it's very important, especially for young people, to actually understand that, that there are options. Hmm. And Deb Kent, who's Kaya's advisor, actually realised that she was positively geared versus negatively geared. Bryce, I mean, that's a tax investment strategy. Yeah. How many 20-something uh, year olds would understand positive versus negative gearing? Well, I'm not sure many of them would. I, I do think that we have a fascination in Australia around owning property, and it's not particularly a bad thing. Um, the problem can be, though, that it means that people think that's the only way that they can invest money. Mm -hmm. And it's quite hard to get that first deposit together. Um, mm -hmm. It can be quite hard to service a loan. And there are other ways that people can make their money work for them. Yeah, look, and Kaya admitted, I, I want to do it. I just don't know where to start. And I think you know, that's the problem, isn't it? That most of us don't know about other investments. And, and Debbie, obviously from the super perspective, super funds are investing for you, but we don't see where that goes. You just see the result at the end of your working life. And we have to do a better, store, a better job of telling the story of where your super money is invested because super is a vehicle that can give you access to an amazing array of investments globally in Australia, different asset classes. And I think it's really important that young people understand that. But just to the point of starting early, you know, the terrific thing is that she did something. She did start. I think the really important thing is to start early if you're going to have a, a good long-term investment portfolio. Hmm. Look, the value in seeing these athletes go through this process, the ones in their 20s are kind of their eyes light up, you know, because they realise, hey, it's not going to be as hard for me in my 40s and 50s. And, and they're lucky to be going through the process. Bryce, what do you think um, Kaya's strategy around she's moving out of soccer, you know, her, she's been playing a long time since she was 16, 28 now, mm. into perhaps the business community. So what tips would you give people who are, she wants to work ironically in finance, believe it or not, yeah. what tips would we give Kaya? Um, well, look, the finance industry is a great place to work. It's a huge employer in Australia. Mm. And, uh, you know, from a point of view of UBS Asset Management, wherever I travel in the world, we have Australians in the office. Uh, you know, Australians have been exported around the mm. world for their financial mm. expertise. So it's, it's a terrific industry. Um, I think, you know, picking up on something that Debbie said, though, it was great that she did something. I, I think that's a really, really good point. You know, people can uh, spend a lot of time saying, you know, what's the difference between a good and a better thing mm -hmm. to do? Mm -hmm. It's important you do something. 
Um, so, and I think for, for someone like Kai, who's moving into the, the finance industry, there's a lot of opportunity to get started in that industry here in Australia, but there's also a lot of opportunity to get around the world. Well, I was happy to hear Kai wanted to work in finance and, you know, finance always hasn't had a good rap lately with the Royal Commission. There's had a mm. lot of bad publicity, to be honest. You know, Debbie, talk to me about how super funds can help repair that and get people to trust the system because there is a real breakdown of trust at the moment. And trust is so incredibly important with investing because mm. it is an emotional decision. You know, mm. it's not just a rational decision. People invest from an emotional point of view. So obviously we have a big role to play in building that trust. And you know, for us, we're a profit to member fund. So I guess for us, it's very focused on engaging with the member and building that trust at the member level. And how important is it, do you think, around fees. There's a lot of debate around fees at the moment and is it, you know, an active manager who adds a lot of value, is that more important than low fees or are low fees more important than end return? What do you think? I think it's really about the net return. So it's about the return you get after the fees being paid. There are some asset classes that are more expensive. Private equity is an example, but it can give you great returns and it can give you be a good part of a diversified portfolio. So it's incredibly important to look what you're actually getting after fees and after taxes and not just focus on the fees alone. What do you think, Bryce? Uh, I think it's a very good point. I mean, I'd also say that you know, the focus on fees in Australia is very strong and that's been great for the consumer. It's been great for the average Australian. Uh, you know, Morningstar have done work around the average investment fees that people pay around the world. Australia ranks as one of the most cost effective places in the world uh, to invest. Really? And, and, and that's, that's great and, and that will continue to happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of choice here and those things mean that investment managers have to compete to make sure that they bring a solid return um, and a solid return after the fee. I think it's really important. Mm. Well, you brought out Jeffrey Wong to give Kai a masterclass from Asia. Um, so wise. I, I felt like I needed to sit at the lap of Jeffrey Wong and hear what he had to say for hours. But one of the things he said that I thought was interesting, that a rule of thumb is about five investments means you're diversified. Talk to me about that. Well, it, it depends on the theory that you're, uh, you're looking at as to how diversified you are, but it, it is very fair to say that if your only investment is an investment property in a suburb in Australia, you're not well diversified. Mm. It's great that you're doing something. It's great that you're building wealth. It's great that you've got a uh, you know, forced savings plan, if you will, as you pay off that investment, yep. but it means you're not diversified. And what that means is if house prices go down, then you're, the value of your investment's going down. By holding some money in direct property, which is what we'd call that kind of investment, in mm. listed shares, Australian shares, international shares, and of course, Australian bonds and international bonds, if you have those five asset classes, it means that your portfolio is far better constructed to ride the ups and downs of uh, global financial markets. Mm. Debbie, you're doing that all the time as a super fund. What can the average person who's sitting there watching this, thinking, I want to be like Kai or I want to get my plan together, do to make their investments in super and outside of super as diversified as possible without getting crazy and too diversified? I think it's about starting early. And I think it's about understanding the power of compound interest. Okay. And, you know, it's amazing. Einstein referred to it as the eighth wonder of the world. And I think it's incredibly powerful. You know, he was asked at one stage, what's the strongest force in the world? And he said compound interest. That's how powerful compound interest is. And really important to think about that, starting early, starting when you're young. And if you didn't start when, you're, when you were young, if you didn't start early, then to start now. And compounding really is the returns from when you're young being put back into the investment and then that becoming a bigger investment and those returns keep going back in. Because yes. I don't think people, they don't really teach it at school. Well, they didn't in my day. Maybe my kids are learning that now. But I found compounding isn't something people go, got it. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. totally into that. It's something that we in the finance industry yeah. talk about and Einstein, but probably it's 28 year olds need to talk about it a little bit more. And there's a lovely analogy to a snowball you know, taking a snowball as much as you can have in your hands and then rolling it to form a snowman. And just the way it gathers, you know, if you've ever rolled snow, the way it gathers on itself. I think mm. that's a lovely analogy for compound interest. Hmm. And a suitable one, UBS from Switzerland, we could be rolling some snowballs <laughs> of cash. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Bryce and Debbie, for talking to me today. Uh, I think we're helping Kaya along the way and I'm pretty sure she's gonna get a happy ending. <laughs>